The ice isn't always thick enough to hold a truck, but the conditions have been good on Higgins Lake. Ice is about a foot thick, plenty safe. Bernie Hines from Houghton Lake is our guide, and the tip-up he's setting is one he invented, a big spool you use like a reel that sits down in the water, light tackle, fishing 100 feet deep. That's where the Higgins Lake lake trout, splake, and brown trout lurk. Bernie Hines teaches a seminar on the ice at the end of February with Redmond's Bait Shop, but today he's giving us a sneak preview. So join me, Fred Trost, as we all learn trout fishing through the ice, because it's Thursday night, time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again at all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in this state of Michigan You know, for walleye and pike, you know, some people use wire leaders, a big treble hook. Right, I use a, this is a, a number 12 hook, I'm extremely sharp. I, I see that. That's a that's a MEPS treble hook. And that's all you need for the big lake trout. Oh, yeah. We've landed them uh, well over 20 pounds with that little hook. No leader. No leader. No now, this, what do this, we have? Uh, here we have uh, two split shots. We have a, um, a swivel in the line. That's to keep your line from twisting up. That has been your, when you're reeling, a, a, even you bring your bait up, the, the minnow's spinning around. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll twist a line, and pretty soon you've got, uh, you've got runners out where you just don't, your line is no good. Okay, well, let's rig up a, a smelt here. Okay, we'll Get one out here. of the bucket. You like a, a, a good big smelt? Oh, yeah. or that, that discourages the smaller ones from feeding, too. We, we, don't, uh, we don't want to catch any small fish today. We want all big ones. So we'll get a nice size smelt out of here. Is this a There's Higgins a, Lake smelt? This is a Higgins Lake smelt. He slept in Houghton Lake all night, or Higgins Lake all night last night. He's going to go down here and see if we can catch one of the big lake trout with him. Now, most of the shanties that are out here along the shelf, uh, they're fishing for smelt? Uh, Ninety percent of them are. Some are fishing for for whitefish. Uh, some are even fishing for perch. You know, first fish uh, perch in the daytime. Uh, it's pretty good perch fishing out here. There he goes. Seems to yeah, be drifting now he's down now. Down, yeah. And I'll give him as much line as I can right here to to speed him down there. Now, give me a demonstration here. When a trag a flag trips. You can tell it's cold. A drag flips. <laughs> <laughs> One of flag trips. Do you have to set the hook? Do you have to yank it like no, you would? No, no. We we let them go. To give them a chance to swallow the bait. Uh, we have anywhere from 300 to 500 feet of line on these reels, and uh, you just give them the time to uh, swallow the hook. And then uh, the hooks are so sharp that you do not set the hook. And they're they're a fine wire hook. So if you jerk them, you can you can uh, straighten the hook out or. Uh, uh, tear it right loose from the fish. Mm -hmm. So the best way is just, just to reel them in. Now I'm fishing uh, five turns off the bottom. Now you drug us out here before daylight when it was dark, but normally you spend that early morning time getting your tip upset, but you say they don't, you don't have to get out here early for them to be hitting. Um, now last week we come out here at, uh, at uh, the same hour we did this morning and within a half hour uh, by 8.30, um, we, had, we had trout laying on the ice. We had three or four trout laying on the ice. Mm -hmm. So really, the, uh, uh, the feed, uh, for lake trout, I, I prefer the uh, early morning hours, uh, say from um, 7.30 to, to about 9.30. But do they hit all day? Uh, spotty, on and off. Uh, trout are funny. They'll, they'll be feeding uh, heavy for an hour, maybe in the morning, and then uh, you, know, you have a flat spot, and then maybe in the afternoon. So. Mm -hmm. you, just never know. We have a flag? Looks that way. Where? Straight out that way. Straight out? That flag's up there. Is it? Yeah. Well, we're in business. Now that would be great to have a school moving through here. Right. Now this tip up here we placed on the edge of the drop off. This is a sunken island now here. And this is where the, the, the uh, depth increases here to uh, probably 100 feet here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see this technique. This will be. This will be my first. I haven't uh, fished trout like this on tip-ups before. Talked about it for years. Well, right now, 
He's got all the line out. Uh-oh. And we've got a fish on there. All right. How much line, uh, you say 300 feet? We have at least 300 feet of line on this. I run anywhere from 300 to 500 feet of line on a tip-up. Great, well, we have a crowd here for this one. Well, that's the first one, and I would almost bet that is a keeper. Almost bet. <laughs> well, I'm not a betting man. <laughs> now, we want to see your finger after you're done reeling in okay. 300 feet of line. It'll be a little cold. <laughs> but you've got to suffer a few discomforts to catch the fish. Now, what are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel right now it's like about a, a six, maybe seven pound trout. Seriously? Is, Seriously. Is he pulling? He is pulling, but as long as I can gain line on him, I'll get as much as I can in. Yeah. Do you feel him? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and take up the... Okay. Now, you want to be careful when you're reeling them in, fighting with the reel, that you don't wind the line in the back of the uh, tip up here. Mm -hmm. And you see my fingers here, I'll, I'll keep a drag on the reel in case he wants to take line. That way the reel won't spin free and tangle up the line. Oh, you haven't come to the matchstick no, yet. No, we, we, when we come to the matchstick, we'll still have probably 100 <laughs> feet to go. This is what, like I say, we're probably 100 feet of water here. This is the edge of the drop off. Now, Terry, come on over here, Terry. Terry has the gaff. Do you always uh, bring a keeper out of the hole with the gaff? No, no. If it's a small one, uh, I just grab him by the hand. Once you start a fish up the hole, a uh, fish can't swim backwards. Mm -hmm. Once his head starts coming up, you've got him. Mm -hmm. He can't go anywhere. He's tiring a little bit. He's coming in. He's, he's a keeper, but it, uh, I don't think you'd go more than four pounds. Okay, now, now we, we lost yeah. we lost two or three pounds yeah, here well, in the past minute. You always you always shoot for the biggest, you, you know. For the big one. <laughs> so if you were a betting man, if I was a betting man now, I would say it would go four pounds. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting. But it's still a good fish. The smaller the fish, the better eaten. I prefer. Uh, Looks like he's swinging over to this side yeah, of the he's hole. He's swimming all around now. He's yep. He starts coming. Oh, here he is! Here he is! Here he is! I see him right now. Now you play him very gingerly. Oh, ho, a oh, nice you know. laker. Okay. Now here's what I do. I don't gaff these. I don't gaff a little on my kiss. I would rather, like I say, they can't. They can't swim backwards. Oh, right. Great. A Higgins Lake lake trout. There, Bernie. There is. You proved it. <laughs> there is a fine eating fish right there. <laughs> I guess so. Nothing better. Bernie Hines proved he's a master at catching trout in Higgins Lake and teaching us how. Now, when that next flag pops up, oh, there's one now. That one's yours. Give it a try. We have a great recipe for Higgins Lake lake trout or salmon sent to us by Vicki Blaisdell from Midland. It's called salmon or trout steaks in cucumber sauce. Kathy Beitler is going to start by boiling water in a frying pan, which she's going to poach the fish in. A simple poaching broth made by adding lemon juice and a little salt. Salmon and trout are both oily fish, and they're particularly good boiled or poached because the oils and fats come out, leaving a moist meat, but not oily. In poaching, you don't have to cover the fish with water, but it's okay if you do. The salt, by the way, isn't necessary if you're on a low-salt diet. Now, while this is poaching, you can prepare the cucumber sauce, which is a combination of sour cream, chopped or dried parsley, and finely chopped onion, dash of lemon juice, and salt and pepper, and grated, not sliced, cucumber. Dump a cup of sour cream into the grated cucumber, two teaspoons of minced parsley, and a half teaspoon of grated onion, a teaspoon of lemon juice, a little salt and pepper, Mix it up and refrigerate it along with the boiled fish. Now, when they're both cold, the fish becomes very firm, and the sauce is like that sliced cucumber you have in sour cream in the summertime. Very tasty. The boiled fish is extremely mild. Anybody would like it. Now, the question is, will Bob Garner like the fish or the sauce? Or both? Uh, is he I gonna think like both. The, is he going to like the cucumbers? I see yes. all of the above. <laughs> uh, no, no it, it, it's, it's really good. It's kind of like herring without being all that fishy like herring mm -hmm. is. It's, it's like either a pickled herring or a herring and cream sauce, which has always been one of my favorites anyway. But this is, 
undoubtedly a, a lot more lighter in texture and, and, and more flavorful, not the heavy fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that salmon is so mild. Oh, it mm -hmm. is. And the sauce really makes this recipe. The, the, Vicky did a good job. The sauce, I mean, <laughs> the salmon is great, but the sauce is the star. Uh, yes, if it is. If you like cucumbers with onions, that's basically yep. what this is. And just a little bit of parsley in it, and it's great. But it's terrific. Vicky Blaisdell has a great new twist on boiled salmon or trout with a cucumber sauce. We loved it, and you can get the recipe free from the Outdoor Digest. Address coming up at the end of the show. What is a tiger trout and why is it of interest to anglers? A tiger trout is a cross between a female brown trout and a male brook trout. It has tiger-like markings on its side and is more aggressive than either parent and easier to catch. A surface feeder, it's an ideal put-take trout because it has a high return to the creel. Here's a fish that's a scrappy fighter. Pat Funch from Mount Morris caught this 16 and a half inch white bass at the hot pond in Saginaw Bay. At two pounds, five ounces, it's a trophy. And anytime you get a two pound perch, you have a lunker. Bob Chynek from Essexville caught one on a minnow in Saginaw Bay by buoy 19, fishing a minnow, of course. And check out this big buck. 10 points, 21 and a half inch spread. The longest time is 11 inches. 18 year old Trevor Mills from Olivet took it in Eaton County opening morning. Lots of venison from this 250 pounder. Well, the fellow standing by this big fish didn't catch it. Just a buddy of the lucky angler who caught the largest fish in 1986. He told us about it at our Stroh's Fishing Awards banquet last year. Here is the biggest fish spearing Black Lake, Sheboygan County, a lake sturgeon that weighed 123 pounds, 12 ounces, 76 inches long, Craig Thams from Chelsea. What's it like to spear one this size? It's really something. Um, I guess the big highlights behind the story is um, when it came through the hole, only its head came through the hole. And That's why you had it mounted this way. That's right. <laughs> So anyways, I threw the spear down, and uh, I only had him with one tine on the spear, and lucky it was enough to, you know, he didn't get away. How did you pull him through the hole? Well, I had another man that came from the other ice, and he was a backup spear. He threw another spear in it because uh, it might get away with just one tine. We brought him up and gaff hooked him and just grabbed him by the gills and pulled him in the ice shanty. Now, this guy in the other shanty, how did he know that you needed help? I was yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> yeah, I was. Have you speared other sturgeon before? That was the first time I went fishing for sturgeon. Man, what a story. 123 pounds, 12 ounces, 76 inches long. Craig Thames from Chelsea. Sounds to me like you are the big master angler of the year. Congratulations. <laughs> get quite a few letters from frustrated anglers like this one from Terry Jefferson from Ann Arbor who writes, what lures or techniques do you suggest for enticing reticent bluegills which are sitting on beds? Well Terry, fish strike either from hunger or from aggravation. Now if a fish is hungry but won't strike, try using lighter line or smaller bait so it'll drift in more naturally. An aggravated bluegill will attack a lure and blow it out its mouth rather than taking it in. Now, you're going to have to be fast to hook those. If they won't strike at all, well, work some other beds and then come back in a few hours. Things will change. Outdoors Forever is a program we started here on Michigan Outdoors a year and a half ago dedicated to making the outdoors safer, more available, and to extending everybody's abilities outdoors so you can hunt and fish longer than you thought you could. Roger McCarville is the executive director of this program, and here's a question he could use your help with. One of the things that really, you know, we get every week in here that really makes it worthwhile is some of the letters that uh, people send in. And I have one here that uh, Gary Manuzek sent in. And he said he's watched Michigan Outdoors for uh, three years since he's moved here, and he's watched the Outdoors Forever part grow. But what he never thought he'd ever need is, but here he has a problem with his uh, father-in-law. He's 82 years old doesn't want to give up his hunting and fishing. He can go out salmon fishing in the boats, but when it comes to doing his brook trout, he can't get down to the streams. He used to go to uh, Claybank Creek. It's too hard for him to get on there. And Gary would like us to find out from our viewers, or any of the folks that get out and do the trout fishing, do you know where there's a stream where he can get out there, park close, get into the stream, and get some more trout. 
He said he's 82 years young and would like to get back out. He doesn't want to give up the outdoors. And I think that's what our outdoors forever, the, the viewers that can write into us and tell us where we can send this guy, we can solve another problem. Alan Street has hunted and fished all his life until an accident on the job put him in a wheelchair for six months. Now he uses crutches and he's back outdoors. But for all the difficulties he's had with crutches in the snow, his biggest problem comes about when he's sitting still. What are the problems you have? Is it, is it mainly dangerous? Could you hurt yourself worse well, if you fell or what? Uh, I can't feel cold. I can't feel the heat. So if I'm out here on the ice, I've got to learn to... Uh, I feel the cold in my right foot, then I've got to get my left foot warmed up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I can get frostbite pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, though, slipping around and, you know, the coldness is what I've really got to worry about hmm. right now. So, yeah, most people would think it would be the worry of slipping and falling. Yeah, no, it's it's cold, too. You know, I've, I can sit out here for a couple hours and my left leg can get real cold and I don't even know mm -hmm. it. So I've got to watch, I've got to learn, like, if my right leg gets cold, I know my left leg is, is cold or, or colder because mm -hmm. I don't have the circulation in the leg. For people with disabilities like Alan's, as long as they can stay warm, they can enjoy hunting and fishing. Circulation and warmth, major problems for a lot of us outdoors and ones we're always looking for ways to solve. Catherine Mulhaupt is the creative director of Outdoors Forever and the editor of the Outdoor Digest. She's always coming up with ideas and products that maybe originated with handicappers but have applications to all kinds of sportsmen and outdoor activities. We've got some odd looking knives here and the reason they're odd is because they're designed for somebody who perhaps doesn't have full use of both hands or can only use one hand and they're really handy for anybody. Um, this little knife here if you look closely, you'll see that the, the blade is sticking out and uh, looks almost like the point's been broken off. And what that's there for is if you only have use of one hand, you can set it on the edge of a table or a, a book or your counter and just open it with the one hand and uh, close it the same way. A knife for people with one hand. I bet there's nobody who couldn't have used one at one time or another. Dan Selahowski is a board member of Outdoors Forever, and his occupation is physical therapy. He works with a lot of injuries, young people hurt on the job or injured in sports. What is the attitude of people who have these kind of injuries and problems? Are they really willing and in a, in a big yank to get back in the swing of things? Just the opposite. They're afraid. First of all, obviously the, uh, the main emphasis would be to get back their activities of daily living just a simple thing like be able to, to wash mm -hmm. themselves again or, or just function around a house. After a while, that they've learned to handle that. They want to get out and do things like they used to. But if we weren't here today, they, I doubt if any of these guys would have tried to wheel their wheelchair out a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't try it, but groups like this are going to give them a hand and tell them, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a hand, and, and there's a way to do it. Try this way or that way. Mm -hmm. So a little, all you need to light is a little bit of fire under them. And, and they have the security of being with someone that first couple times, yeah. then they're hooked. Mm -hmm. No, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Getting hooked on fishing is easy to do. And if you've had an injury or gotten away from hunting or fishing for some reason, cheer up. We're finding ways to overcome these physical disabilities. That's what Outdoors Forever is all about. For more information, make sure you get the Outdoors Forever magazine, a free copy available inside the Outdoor Digest. Here's how you can get one a good weekend. The temperatures have been going down. Oh, things change so fast in this state, but outdoors is a great place to be. I hope you can enjoy it. See you next week. rugged shore and woodlands of the north its history of copper mines and iron ore the great lakes fisheries to the farmlands of the southern counties we'll look around again and all that waits the sportsman in the state of michigan next week on michigan outdoors we're going to try something different a winter goose hunt with bow hunters ron leclair and norm blaker with a little luck, they'll bag the geese for our Swiss goose recipe. Otherwise, it's geese from the freezer. Join us, see how we do. 
Sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan